Party favors, double glitter techniques for cards, personalized doorknobs, and funky kaleidoscope pendants. You're the chef at today's Scrapbook Soup. Today's Scrapbook Soup has been brought to you in part by Michael Stores Incorporated, where creativity happens. Michaels.com, Sakura Color Products of America, SakuraofAmerica.com. that you could have a whole party with your scrapbook supplies? Well, I've got Jo Pearson here from Michaels, and she's gonna show us how to make not only the lovely table setting and stuff that we see in front of us, but also the party favors. Absolutely. You know what, it is amazing to me, all the scrapbook paper that's available. And you know, we really are taking it away from the page. I mean, mm -hmm. not all together, but just using it for so many different things. So this is a great example. We have the whole party set here, mm -hmm. including our centerpiece and some candy dishes, and of course our lovely crowns that we have on today. But I'm gonna show you how to make the little favor box. Okay. And so what we've done, and again, you can choose, you know, take this off to whatever color you want it to be. It doesn't have to be black and, you know, it can be just whatever right, color. if you didn't want it to be pink, you could certainly do something more masculine. Absolutely. Or whatever Absolutely. your wedding colors were. And this is glitter paper, so we love it Ooh. because it's glitter. So all the templates and all the instructions are available on the website. So we already have this pre-cut and mm -hmm. scored, okay? So it's a matter of, we also took a fun little a fun little cutout pieces of paper. Mm -hmm. Now you could cut these out with a punch or a die cut system mm -hmm. or whatever. You could just use a template and cut them out. So what we've done is we've cut out all the little shapes and we're gonna make the little flowers that go on. But there's kind of a little trick. Now I'm gonna pick one of these up. Maybe we can see this one better. Now I've already punched a hole in the center because okay. I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna put a bread in later. But we're just gonna kind of do some folding. So you're just folding it in half and both kind different of scrunching. ways. So what we want to do, because we really want to just kind of scrunch this up a little bit. Okay. So that our flower is dimensional. Now if you wanted to, you could spritz this with some water. Mm -hmm. and you could actually crush the paper and you can ah. get a whole different look, which is kind of fun. So what we've done here then is we've done that with several of these. Okay. And we have our holes in them. And then look, I'm just going to put them together and I've got mm -hmm. this fabulous bread. A little bit has, of bling. Oh, has some rhinestone in it. So we're just going to set this in the middle of our flowers that we've punched the holes through. Okay. Set it in and here. And is there any way that you, when you're coordinating, mixing, matching pattern papers like this, is there any rule that you follow? Oh, I think there are, I think the rule is there are no rules. I mean, <laughs> what, when you look at what we put together here, we have prints mm -hmm. and stripes and all kinds of things. So I think it's just kind of, wow, whatever's have fun. fun. I know. So look, so we took our fun little paper like this. Mm -hmm. Now our handle is just a piece of ribbon. And if you'll notice, I went ahead and I put a grommet in it mm -hmm. and we just have a little piece of chain. Mm. So I'm going to take. It almost looks like a necklace, doesn't it? I know it could be. And you know what? Then you could go back and you could personalize it with, you could personalize it with a charm mm -hmm. or just a stick on letter. If you have mm -hmm. nice handwriting, then you can do that. But I'm going to take and we're going to put that piece of ribbon mm -hmm. right down here on the inside of our card okay. here. You can even put a photo of the person. Oh, absolutely. And then of course, you know, you can pick out the colors of your candy. So we're just going to kind of lay this in here this way because you're going to see it's going to make our handle. Okay. okay. Then we just took some fun. You can take any kind of candy that you mm -hmm. want to, and you can tape it inside the box. But look, we'll take our handle and put it this way. Okay. And then we're going to go up, and we'll just fold it. Okay. Now, you can put on some trim if you'd like to, or again, just use your, when you're all done and have it assembled, mm -hmm. then just go ahead and you can tape it closed. So this is really customizable to sort of as fancy or as clean as you want it to be. You know, if you have, this would be great wedding invitations. So, you know, if yeah. you have 200 to make, then you, mm -hmm. maybe you're going to make it a little more simple. But then again, we're just going to go and we put our fun little flower on the front of here. I'm just going to okay. put it on with some tape. Okay. And of course you could glue it or do whatever you'd want to there. And if you were gonna do the invitation, obviously on that blank inside, that's where you'd print the invitation. You know what, you could do that. This is actually what 
you know, we're, we're going to just slip our little, we're going to put our little candy in mm -hmm. there because this is our fun little candy box. And, but yes, you can open it up and then it would be fun because then your whole invitation and you've made it's all right of there. that. Absolutely. So a couple of the other things we have, this is mm -hmm. a fun little boa mm -hmm. piece and I'm going to pick this up and show you. Look, we just oh, did that wow. same flower, but look, we did a great big version of the flower, it's of course, beautiful. with the bling in there and then just some leaves. And you know, you could wear this if you wanted There's to. There's a pin back on that one actually. It, so you, you can put, put it right on yourself as a kind of fancy party embellishment. You know, or maybe even attached it to, if you know, if you have some ribbon or something on your chair, you could attach mm -hmm. it to the chair and you've just got you know and I look. can also see if you used a white boa a bride to be going out for her bachelorette party attaching it to herself to designate herself as the bride you know absolutely this this actually would make a great bachelorette party it would it would so ch tell me about a little bit of the other stuff that you have here well, look what we did we actually just took different scrap of paper mm -hmm. and kind of put it together and it's just taped mm -hmm. and that made our great little table Beautiful runner table runner and so quick and easy and then kind of disposable okay yeah. so then the boxes now this is what this is made out of mm -hmm. these are just paper mache boxes just and you'll plain paper mache boxes that we just use double stick tape mm -hmm. and of course it's got the beautiful bling around there have to have that you know what this is such a good project for all those papers I have that I don't want to cut because they're so beautiful and I'm afraid to use them like on a scrapbook page but you get to see more of the paper on it this way well because now they are printing paper that has pictures yeah. and you know all kinds of fun things like mm -hmm. that on it but you'll see one of them we turned up side down and we're just mm. using kind of as a little um, display. display piece. Mm -hmm. And then we took the lid and that's what we cut. We painted the inside, covered the outside with some paper and some bling and that's just a little candy, candy dish. dish. So yeah, we're just awesome. using, we're and using of course, We can't forget about our fabulous oh, crowns. Aren't they fabulous? Well, we'll be queens for the day. <laughs> it's wonderful. <laughs> and again, change them. We just have them on a little plastic headband uh -huh. and we just have the paper all glued on and you've got your Can you imagine little... for a birthday party how much the little girls would love wearing these around? Well, you know or what might be girls fun too? too? I know. What might be fun too is let them make them and that be their party favorite that they're oh. actually making at the party and then they can personalize their crown That's to any such color a they idea. want. Yeah. Yeah. Joe, thank you so much. You're so welcome. This was fantastic. Yeah, let's have a party. Yes, okay. let's do it. <laughs> and we'll be right back. Linnell Hollow joins us from Dreamweaver Stencils, and she is going to show us a special technique. Now, Linnell, you've been here before, but let's look at this pink card down here with the umbrella. This is something new you're going to show us, and mm -hmm. it's called a double glitter technique, and we love blinging glitters. So yeah. how do we do this? Well, you start with a uh, double-sided mounting paper. Uh -huh. It's sticky on both sides. Okay. And you take off, and it comes in a pack like this. Okay. And you remove one side of the release paper. And I like to have a piece of cardstock that I attach it to. Okay. Like so. And so you're putting it sticky side down, actually, right on the cardstock. Yes. Uh -huh. And then you're going to take the other side off. Ah, like okay. This. I'll let you work okay, on that. Okay, I'll work on that for you. And then you want to soap the back of your stencil. And this is 100% natural soap, Julie. Okay. So I'm just stroking it all over the back of the stencil. And, 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 is, and even the bridges. The okay. bridges, too. You want to get it all over there. I've already kind of prepped this one in advance, and you kind of see that it's all filled in. If you have some excess soap, I take a large brush like this and just kind of brush out those little crummies that might get on your sticky. Right. And now... And you did say it was handmade soap, and that is important, correct? Yeah, it's 100% natural, and which makes the soap a little softer. Uh, and that's the... Or natural soap. I'm natural. not saying handmade. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Although this one happens to be handmade, it, it is 100% natural as well. And then you want to press it down because you don't want the glitter to flare underneath. Okay. So you want it firmly mm -hmm. on there. And then I'm going to just work on a piece of paper. I'm going to lift this up for you. Thank you. There we go. And at this point, I'm going to dip... Just, just pour the glitter pour it pretty on. liberally right I, over the top. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm, and I just kind of work it in just a little bit with my fingers. Mm -hmm. And then I knock off the excess. Okay. Just like pop it on the back just a little bit. Yep. And I'm just going to get all that and excess And then brush it off, off with a nice soft brush. Mm -hmm. And now I'm ready yeah. mm -hmm. for my next step, okay. which in this case... Uh, Would you like me to take this away? You're going yeah, to Julie, okay. take the, if you don't mind. Do that yeah, for you. That'd be great. Right. Now, you know, we put all this glitter back in the container, right? Just fold of the course. Of course, we don't throw anything away. Never. 
And now what I'm doing is I'm picking up just a little bit of pigment ink on the tip of my brush and just with a circular rouging motion, oh. I'm shading on here. And you're going right on top of the glitter and the glitter's not going to come off into the brush when you do that? It does a little bit, but as you notice, when I oh, brushed away the yeah. excess, I got most of it, and so mm -hmm. what's sticking on there should stick on there. See, I don't really see any on my ink pad. No, you don't at all, and it gives a nice shadow effect. Yep, so I'm just shading that a little bit. Okay. Now, the other thing I'm going to do, I'm going to take black. I want to make the handle black, so I'm tapping that on. Okay. Now, is this a special kind of ink, Linnell, or can we use You can anything? use dye ink. You can okay. use pigment ink. Just about anything that you have available, you can use. Mm -hmm. So I am just, at this point, I'm going to take some more black, and I'm going to do these dots. And add some black polka dots to that umbrella. <laughs> yes, and the reason I'm stippling here, Julie, instead of the rouging, is yeah. you're working through two layers of stencils, so you want to really pop it down there oh, right. through those two layers of stencils. Mm -hmm. It's more of a little bouncing action rather than the swirl. Mm -hmm. That's right. Now, the next step is really key. Oh, that is so pretty. Key to success, and that is taking the stencil off, or in this case, taking the sticky paper off. So what I'm doing is you want to turn that upside down because if I tried to peel the stencil off, it would bend the stencil. Right, and then you wouldn't be able to use it again. That wouldn't be very good. Yeah, so yeah. I am actually peeling the paper off. Mm -hmm. And I'm just putting my fingers in here, kind of walking my fingers to support it. Okay. And that's why you have the soap on the back of the stencil, so you have an easy release. That's right. And that just washes off when you're okay. done. Now, I have an excess of sticky in the background, and this mm -hmm. is where the double glitter comes in. Oh. I'm going to just shake it all over. Oh, that is so pretty. And I'm just rubbing that it. That is so pretty. A little bit. Okay, now th there's lots of different colors of glitters to use, so we could use different colors or just whatever really we wanted to design with. Right. When I use this technique of stenciling, for instance, on the birds here, uh -huh. I use different transparent glitters on all the birds. Okay. And then I stenciled with inks that are a little bit darker. Okay. Now, do you have to use a lighter color for the background? You could you could go the opposite. You get a little bit more contrast if whatever you have done your first glitter with mm -hmm. is light, then you want the background to be dark. Oh, okay. So you have... So, so we're pop. looking for contrast with our glitters, right? That's right. And you can also use flocking. Uh -huh. But if you're using flocking, like on the bunny here, mm -hmm. you want to rub it, kind of rub it together, so and the little fibers will cling together okay. as, as you're working, and then it'll be more fuzzy. <laughs> <laughs> a nice little fuzzy bunny yeah. or a fuzzy bear. That's or right. What, or what we're using. Now, this is ready, except you see there's still a little bit of glitter where it attached to what I inked. Uh -huh. See, it makes it kind of milky. But once that dries, you can give it a nice hard pop and dust it off with your brush again, and then it's ready to mount onto your it's card. It's going to come right up. Let's go ahead and do that. Okay. Okay. Uh, I'll leave that paper here, and then you can dust the glitter. Oh, okay. How about if you remove I'll that? Remove I'll this. We'll have a clean one, and then I won't be go. dusting glitter everywhere. So now I can go like this. Oh, that's just, yeah, that comes right off. And the little speckles are there. It just makes it, it just makes it just sparkle. That's true. It does. That is so pretty, and I, I, li I like the way you've done the handle and the dots on the umbrella. But now this is such a great technique. We are going to be double glittering for the rest of the day, and I bet you <laughs> will too. Thank you so much. Thanks, we'll Julie. be right back. Well, there are lots of different ways to decorate knobs, and Julie, you're using scrapbooking pens of all things to decorate these beautiful I knobs I am. Here. I'm using scrapbooking pens to decorate um, some porcelain doorknobs, but you do need to seal it. And I just wanted to show the difference right here. Um, this one I sealed with nail polish, and you can see it really darkened up the colors. And this one is sealed with a gloss gel medium, and I kept those colors nice and pastel. Mm -hmm. And I also use gel medium on these two, but the difference, which I think you can see really clearly, is that this one is sealed with a matte gel medium, and this one has a gloss. So you can really change the look of it in the finishing. Right, uh -huh. This one, again, Make Art, ha certainly has a, that gloss look. And then this last one, which I think has a fun antique Baroque look, I sealed that with actually a crackle 
a, a sort of clear crackle medium. Uh -huh. Very These cool. These are really neat. I mean, you can customize them to go with any home with style. Anything yeah. that you hey, want. Scrapbooking product for home Redo deck. Redo your Who craft knew? desk, right? <laughs> yes, I love that. So just for the ease of working, I've taken a pencil, and any pencil will do. I just have these pretty colored ones for mm -hmm. TV, and you just really jam it in there without a lot of elegance. And once it's on there, I'm going to use a gold paint pen. And you know how these work. You shake them up, pull the shake, cap off. Shake, rattle, and roll, right? <laughs> I just have some test paper to make sure that the ink is flowing through here nicely, and it is. And then I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to draw a simple design on here. We're going to do a big flower. So all that is is a circle, an imperfect circle. Mm -hmm. And then I just do some petals all around. And then I just add some more petals, some more loops. And perfection, again, is completely overrated. You can see my hand is kind of shaky because I'm holding it out for myself. When you're home, you'll nestle it into yourself and be able to hold just it really nice and steady. Just really just snuggle up with those projects exactly. in front of the fire in winter. Or... This is good close work, yeah. you know, to snuggle <laughs> up to. So once I uh, go around here a couple of times, and you can see that I have one here that's already, already done. Well, can, I, can we use these pens too? Absolutely. Any permanent pen that's meant for a non-porous surface will work. Okay. Which is Very great. cool. Hey, I'm going to practice with one of these. <laughs> go ahead. I have go a cool color of pencil you too. You do. So now I'm going to use an opaque, again, this is a scrapbooking pen. I'm going to use an opaque um, pen. And it has a little glue dot here on the end that I'm just going to remove. And you can throw it away. That's just to keep the ink nice and wet when it mm -hmm. comes from the factory. Again, I just test it on my paper to make sure it's working. And then, oops, and then I'm gonna go ahead and I'm just gonna paint in or pen in, whatever you wanna call it. Color in. Color in one of these petals. And you'll see that it goes on quite um, clear and transparent. And you just mix up the colors, you know, going around to the petals. There are no rules. Flowers have no rules. And there's lots of colors, right? Exactly. So you can, whatever lots your decor is. And then once that dries, I just want to show this to you, it dries super opaque. Look at the difference here. Do you see oh how it looks yeah. totally different? So you have to have a little bit of patience. You have to have a little bit of patience. Put it down, get a drink of water, whatever mm -hmm. you want. And when you come back, it looks fabulous like this. And now I'm going to switch to another kind of scrapbooking pen. This time it's a um, transparent, really sort of glossy pen. And I'm going to do the same process over. I'm just going to pull that off, get rid of the gloobery thing on there, test it. And then again, this is why I have the pencil, because now I can hold it very comfortably and I can rotate it through. And this ink is so liquid and wet that it just, you just keep scratching and scratching and it starts to fill. It just kind in. of flows together. It just the, flows mm -hmm. together really beautifully on right it. over that porcelain. Just scratchy, scratchy, scratch. And you know, if you watch any of those home improvement shows, they always say that the fastest way to update or transform any room is to change the hardware that's on your drawers or your cabinets. So well, that's a great tip. Here's a home renovation project yeah. for you at absolutely no cost and a lot of fun. And certainly of a kid's room, your child could customize their room with their name, their friends' names, whatever you would like. Mm -hmm. And so then once I've colored that all in, you can see that I have one here, and you can actually do multiple coats to deepen that transparent color if you'd like. And you know, I like to add a little something special. I always think that you need to <laughs> raise the level. So this just time, that it, it's all in the it's details, right? It's a little right? detail that makes it something special. I'm gonna again just pull the glue off. No, we don't need to save those, right? No, no, okay. those definitely get thrown away. And for this, this is really hard to do. I don't know if everybody can, <laughs> but I'm just gonna do these little dots, and they are going to be. They're gonna, actually gonna dry slightly dimensional which is so super cool. So you're just putting a dot of ink on there. And if you go outside the lines, it who doesn't cares? matter exactly. You're just having fun. So you can add the dots and you can add them in any color, you know? And then of course, once you're done doing all your dots, it looks something like this. You just seal it up with whatever you'd mm -hmm. like. And it's very important to seal it, right? It is important we simply because all those hands rubbing on it as they pull, it's going to rub it off eventually. Right. So and this then is safe. Just clean it by wiping with a cloth. Exactly. Hey, Julie Franks, this is Thank you. absolutely brilliant. <laughs> we'll be right back. Well, we have taken scrapbook pages out of the album and we put them on the wall. And Julie's going to show us how we can actually wear them 
using a special software. Yeah, you know, you do all that work and you put all that time into it. And don't you want to show it off to people well, of course, and talk about how proud you are? Yes. So what you're going to do, and I'm going to just show you how to use the software here, is you're just going to pick any image. Now, I'm going to work with just a regular image from my um, computer here, but you would obviously use a layout or mm -hmm. any 3D project maybe that you like or a painting. And you can see here, the image comes into the shape, and over here I have the preview, and you can see that wonderful kaleidoscope. And you can pick out so many different ones from all the choices that you have here, and so many different looks. You can move it around, you can rotate it, you can change the size. And the nice thing that I like about this is I often find a hidden piece of art somewhere in something that I've done. You know, it turns out that something you made looks like a church cathedral window, it turns mm -hmm. out. Or look how much like a snowflake that looks. I think it's absolutely gorgeous. Yeah, I love the previews mm -hmm. over on the right because it just shows you what the finished kaleidoscope exactly, picture is going to look exactly. like. Exactly. Yeah. So what I would do is I would just print that out. And I mm -hmm. have some here that I've printed quite small as you can see. Very small. Very small. Now these ones happen to fit inside this plastic mold here. Mm -hmm. But I also made some here that I just I punched with a circle punch. You could use any kind of punch that you wanted or any kind of shape. You can print them out a little larger and punch a part of them. You can make butterfly pendants. That would be beautiful oh, out of yes, your kaleidoscope. All sorts of stuff. And then once you do it, you simply mix two parts together to make a nice resin, an epoxy resin. Mm -hmm. And you just simply pour it over. And I have these already poured. They've hardened for 16 hours. And I'm going to go ahead and take them out. Take them out. And, and you can the see here. Are with the resin products and things absolutely, like that. Absolutely. Absolutely. And you can see a bunch here that I've done. You can make earrings and necklaces. Now here, that beautiful first romantic layout that we looked at. Oh, my God. Gosh. That is precious. Can you imagine mm -hmm. being able to wear that wonderful kissing photo around oh, your neck yes. of you and a, your husband? Or a pendant or a brooch. I think it would be so beautiful. You could do a keychain too, mm -hmm. anything like that, you know? You know what? You could actually attach that to a scrapbook page. It would be oh, a very, very cool that's embellishment. That's a fun idea. <laughs> I like that because actually these little thin ones are kind of like buttons. And they are thin enough you would just take a hand drill and punch a hole in them and you could sew them on just like buttons, which I think... Would be also that cool. would be very cool. And I brought here an actually a collection of layouts, and I, I printed out a couple of kaleidoscopes quite large so you can see the different looks that you get from different combinations. For instance, if you look at the Eiffel Tower hat one, you can see that all that red, black, and white makes for a really graphic set of kaleidoscopes. That's beautiful. And you know, the, all the, the you've got four different designs there. Yes. But they were all done from the same photograph. Yeah. Very now, cool. What about the next? This is so, my favorite over here. The bottom here. one, I love that layout. It's just made from magazine pages and book pages and glitter glue and stuff. And I love how that intense orange changes. And I think it's kind of cool because what a kaleidoscope does is like the word forward is going backwards and forwards and backwards and forwards on it. Mm -hmm. It gives that really graphic look without really crying out at you. And that one in the upper right definitely looks like a church cathedral window to me. It really does. Yeah, that's beautiful. And then I love he's a storyteller because the handwriting on it does magical things. In in particular, I really love this one because something about the way that the writing um, happened created a kind of vine look almost. I feel like those are little white flowers somehow. And that was such a serendipitous, magical thing. And the one right above it, you can see, if you didn't know that that was my brother's shirt, it just looks like almost pretty blue flowers. Well, you're creating your own unique, magical piece of yeah, art. Yeah, you're taking existing art and making it into new, fabulous art. Now, Julie, this is brilliant. Thank Thanks. you so much. You have such great ideas. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be right back. Well, we've got time for a couple more fun ideas. So, Julie, tell us what you got. Yeah, well, first of all, we've been talking a lot about mixed media. Yeah. And I did want to show this book that I found. There are different uh, media mm -hmm. uh, surface techniques. That's what cool. I'm looking for. 45, actually, and step-by-step, <gasps> step, full color. Beautiful. And a lot of things that I've seen you do mm -hmm. and our guests do during the series. And I it's just books. a really, really cool book. I like books. I like books, too. You can always go back and look at them while you're sitting with your feet up and a cup of tea. Now, now, this is a tool that I really like. I like to sew, but I don't always want to get the machine out. Okay. And I used to sew just to make the holes, mm -hmm. and then I actually stitch afterwards using different colors. Now this is a tool and it's got different wheels. And so I'm, you mean you use like the needle in the machine to punch the holes? To punch the holes, I see, without yes. any thread, which is just what you're doing with which that Which is what tool. I'm doing with this little tool. Now this is making just a dotted line, but 
over here on my right, there's a lot of different cool, different cool shapes. shapes. There's crisscross and everything. Uh -huh. So if you look at these projects right down here, They're you beautiful. can see all the different uh, designs, like embroidery designs that you can do. Mm -hmm. And it makes it so easy because the holes are already it makes it pre so easy. Well, yes. <laughs> <laughs> because um, everything is pre-punched for you. So all you have to do is just go up and down see with that. the needle. Very easy to do. Mm -hmm. You know, we've talked that. about when you make a hole for mm -hmm. a brad, and then it's sometimes it's not always easy to get those little prongs apart right. on the back. Then this is also a new tool. Okay. So on one end, you're going to make a hole like this, mm -hmm. and then the other end, after you've put the brad through, right. you use this end to actually separate those prongs at the back. No more prongs up your no fingernails. No more prongs that down the thumb. Yeah. That is very, very cool. But you know, I also want everybody to know that we do have some exciting ideas on our website that you can actually do with your children. We have some holiday uh, scrapbook pages. There's also a holiday card. And sometimes it really is fun to get your children, get your grandchildren involved with what you're doing. I agree, and I think that when you craft with your family, then crafting becomes an entire family experience, and everybody takes a little more pride in it. When you give handmade gifts, it means something because they know how much work yes. went into it. Yeah, it's important, and you know what? It's such a high-tech world. You know, all mm -hmm. the kids are out here doing this and this and this and this, and I'm like, <laughs> oh my gosh, you know, what's going on? So it's important that we we play some of that high-tech yes, with some high-tech. take high a little touch. time. Definitely. Exactly. So join us next time for new recipes and ingredients to make your own scrapbook soup. Visit ScrapbookSoupTV.com for a mix of ideas, a mix of ingredients, a mix of designers, and all of the instructions for every project found on this series of Scrapbook Soup. Create your own recipe for great scrapbooking. This is Show 109. A complete set of all 13 episodes of Scrapbook Soup Series 100 is available for $39.99 plus shipping and handling. A mix of designers, techniques, and projects, all in one complete package to watch anytime. Visit ScrapbookSoupTV.com to place your order. Today's Scrapbook Soup has been brought to you in part by Michael Stores Incorporated, where creativity happens. Michaels.com, Sakura Color Products of America, SakuraofAmerica.com.